Greetings, I'm Berent, and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. We are continuing our playthrough of Fallen Land, a post-apocalyptic board game by Fallen Dominion. We're moving into our fourth turn. I think we're doing okay. We're above the other two factions, so I think we've got an advantage so far. There's a couple things I want to mention before we move into the next turn. One is this card right here, a compact welding and cutting torch. For some bizarre reason, Orson stole it from Addison. I don't know how that happened, but Ad this is supposed to be on Addison, so he's going to take his torch back. Somehow it managed to ma get find its way over here. Also, I would like to mention that Fallen Land does have two different solo ways of playing. I mentioned this in the last video, but I do want to reiterate that the first way is a great way to learn how to play the game because it teaches you all the different mechanics, but without the stress of having to beat these other factions. And then the second variant does have multiple factions that you can add. We're doing two, but you can start with one. And that way, again, you get the feel for how the game works and still be able to take on an opponent. And also, this game is, of course, a two to five player game, so you can play with your friends as well. In the last video, there was a card that I played from the action deck, and it was called Hope and Solidarity. And it says, play, choose one player to exclude. I didn't, I excluded both players. So technically one of these players should be able to take advantage of what is on this card. So one of them should gain a prestige and two town health. And I'm gonna choose the Sons of Neptune because they're actually lower. So he's gonna gain one prestige and two town health. So their town health will go to 40. The final thing I wanna mention is, I'm not exactly sure how this works, but it was brought to my attention and I wanna see what everybody thinks. So we had a helping hand. We were successful in this. This was from our first month. It says, draw the next Relic Spoils card, discarding all others. Now, when we were doing that, we got a hold of our ambulance, which is really awesome. But when we were going through the deck to try to find that Relic card, we stumbled onto this card while we were drawing through the deck. And it says, when this card is drawn, immediately discard your current vehicle with its stolen equipment. It says right here, at least the thieves had a sense of humor. And what we would then have is these five matching pink mopeds. And that means that we would have lost our van that we had, if that's how it works. I'm not sure if drawing the next Relic Spoils card and discarding all the others would mean that we actually drew this card, or if we would just take that, drew, draw that card and discard anything else until we get to draw that card. I'm not exactly sure how it works, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of the mopeds because, well, we have this vehicle instead, which is what we would have got when we were digging through for a Relic. And to make things a little bit more fair, I'm going to discard this technology I bought for, and say that instead, I'm just going to have six bucks. So we're going to get six bucks because that van was worth 24. So we have six and we're going to discard this. So it's kind of like getting our 24. We're taking a penalty of 24 bucks. Now, if I'm wrong about that, or if somebody wants to explain exactly how it works, that'd be great. But for now, that's how we're going to do it. Now, will the Enclave of Terra have what it takes to get to 20 prestige or 80 town health? To find out, I need you to meet me at the table. Last time you were here. Now again, we're gonna skip right past the effects phase because we don't have any. Instead, we're gonna go into our draw, deal phase. We're gonna deal ourselves one action card. It says, charge! Play any time to automatically succeed at a vehicle combat or ambush encounter card, or play any time to ignore a vehicle destruction. Oh, that's great. We totally need this because I don't wanna lose that ambulance. That ambulance is awesome. Now we're gonna move into our resource production phase. And up here it shows that we get four salvage and two town health for having two resources. We also gain two more because of our wonderful Orson guy. So we're gonna gain six salvage coin for that. And we're also gonna gain two town health. We're at 45. Our next phase is the auction house phase. So that's where we're gonna gain three spoils, or not gain them, we get to choose if we wanna buy up to two of these. So let's see what we get. Oh, we got another gun coming up here. It's a ranged weapon, a 7.26 millimeter machine gun. I think it's nine though, 19, I mean, oh boy. 
We got an awesome laser pistol. I don't know if we need another machine gun. I want like a samurai sword or something. Lucky day, what's this? You have found some special crates during game setup, reshuffle Lucky Day. Immediately draw six spoils cards, then discard this card. Well, we might buy that. That might be kind of good. Let's see what the last one says. Designer Biker Leathers. Hmm. Equip as the first item. May not be used in conjunction with other armor or clothing spoils cards. All right. Oh, so it does give me some armor. So it's another, it's a good armor piece. I don't see why we don't get that. All right. We're going to have to think about this. So I think what we're going to do is we're not going to buy the gun. And I don't know. I don't think we're going to buy this either because check this out. This thing is, uh, this seems a little, I don't know if I, okay. So here's the deal. I can buy this for five. I can buy this for five bucks because it does say in our solo rules, event cards drawn during the auction house sub phase may be purchased for five salvage coin to receive its bonus. So it's like we got this super bonus at the, it's like we got one of those mystery boxes. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and buy this. I don't see why not, because we can immediately draw six spoil cards, then discard this card. So I'm gonna spend five bucks to buy this card, because this is a absolutely ridiculous card, and we're gonna go ahead and then take advantage of it. So we're gonna pay our five, and gain six spoils cards from our spoils deck. So we got, what's this? Portable generator equipped with, to a vehicle with four or more wheels. I lose a speed, but gain a lot of these extra bonuses here. We can bring it to seven and four in these respected areas. Oh, you know what? I might actually do that. We might, we'll see what's going on here. Let's see what else we got. Oh, here's what I'm talking about. Finally, a melee weapon, a lumberjack ax. Somebody's totally getting that. Let's see what else we get. We got another gun, a 12 gauge bullet shotgun. That's pretty good. All right, let's see what else. Come on, something real good. Oh, another van. I don't think anything's gonna be better than what we have. I, I can understand this is probably going to move hex costs, all hexes cost one movement. That's not bad, so it's better at getting around, but that's okay. I don't think we need that one. I'm gonna put that over here. We've got an awesome vehicle. Well, we're gonna keep all these anyway, but we might sell some of this stuff. Oh, look at this. <laughs> My guys are gonna run around with machine guns. Another machine gun. All right, and the last one is, what's this? Party equipment, equip to all party characters or none. This card may be utilized with armor. Oh, that's awesome. We're totally gonna put this on our guys. Everybody's gonna gain two combat and two survival skill, plus I get to keep my one armor I have over here on my doctor. So we got all these cards. Now we gotta figure out what exactly we're gonna do with them because remember, these do actually weigh things. Well, not that one, but some of these do weigh things. So I gotta make sure I keep them underneath their total weight that they can carry. All right, so we're for sure gonna have this. I'm gonna put this right up here and hopefully remember it. That's my plan. We're gonna put our cards over there. Okay, next we're gonna give our 12 gauge shotgun to somebody that can actually use it. I think we're gonna give it to our doctor. I know it sounds weird, but I, our doctor's gonna get the shotgun. It's going to be awesome. Next, we're going to go ahead and take this Lumberjack Axe, and we're going to give it to Addison because he's got a special ability here that says that he gains plus one into his survival skill and plus two combat skill if he's using an axe. And now he's got an axe. So he's got 9, 10, 11, 12, and here he's got 9, 10, 11, 12. So that's really good. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to take this gun, and we're going to switch it out here. He's going to go ahead and take that gun, and I'm actually going to give this one to him. So his combat skill is through the roof right now. It's at 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and he's got 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So he's going to be doing really good on the first couple checks. Eh, not the greatest on the next. And I'm going to go ahead and give our sledgehammer to our doctor. Our doctor's going to have a sledgehammer, a shotgun, some body armor. He's got a lot of stuff. And now if we look at here, I'm going to pan over so you can see. If you look, he's got four, eight, nine, 10, 11 total uh, weight in equipment that he has. He can hold up to 12 and he's got an extra five. So he's doing just fine. Now, meanwhile, over here, oh, he's not doing good. I've got to deal with this. I got to get him something. He might have to get this high tech utility belt. I think we're gonna give this back because I totally missed that. He is gonna to have to gain some extra holding space in order to hold all this stuff because he's only got 11 and he has 12. So now he's got enough to hold it all. Meanwhile, back over here, let's see how he's doing. Did I screw him all up now? Eight, nine, 10. No, he's still doing okay. Except he's got a wrist rocket slingshot and a flare gun. Oh, that's ridiculous. He doesn't need this anymore. We're getting rid of this. We're gonna put it over here into our auction house. And he's gonna go ahead and take this gun instead. Oh, but that means I gotta discard the flare gun pistol too. Okay, well this guy's just kinda losing a lot of his stuff here. He's just gonna be like that. There we go. 
I think I am going to go ahead and equip this to our ambulance, which means we're going to lose one speed, but I think it'll be okay. We're going to put this into our auction house. And everybody has a gun, so I'm going to actually kind of put this into our auction house, I guess. His flare gun isn't that great, but it does have that power that says that I can discard this item to avoid the negative effects of a failure on an encounter or mission card. I could have done that with the Amish one, but I really didn't under know if that'd be <laughs> right. I mean, the guy's she fighting with a rake and all of a sudden I shoot a flare gun at him. That doesn't seem too fair. All right, so we're going to be good there. Our guys are totally ready to go now that we're done with the auction house phase. Next, we've got our town event phase. Oh, before we do that, we've got a card we got to play. That's my fault. I should have played this card during the effects phase. And we're totally going to do this because we really haven't rolled any dice or anything. Attach this to your town playmat. Each town business phase, subtract one from the town event roll. We are totally going <laughs> to put this on our town. So now when we make a roll on this town event chart, we get to subtract three. Not only do we get one from the government transparency, we also get the diplomatic connections. All right, well, let's roll our die. We got a five minus three is two. So we're gonna gain one prestige and two town health. So our prestige is gonna go up to 11 and our town health is gonna go to 47. Now we have to roll on our OFTEC chart and we have our Sons of Neptune and our new Federalists. Let's see what happens. A five and a five, well that'll make things pretty easy. <laughs> According to our OFTEC chart here, which is the opposing faction town event chart, we are gonna to go to number five. It says four town health, two prestige, and draw and play one card from the red dot action deck as a secondary effect. So they're gonna go ahead and gain two prestige. One, two. Now, I, was, I gave this up, so I have to lose one prestige, but I'm not gonna do it because I'm gonna give you a spoiler. I'm gonna buy this back when it's during the buy phase. So I'm not gonna drop my prestige right now because I'm planning to buy it back. They're also gonna gain four town health. One, two, three, four. And this guy's gonna be right behind. Oh, they're almost caught up with us. Now it's a secondary effect I have to draw from the red action deck. Let's see what we get. It says sneaky, real sneaky. Play when an opponent plays an action card on another player. The target ignores its effect and instead places the card into their hand. Afterwards, you draw a free action card. All right, so from what I gather, when I play my next card, this is gonna make me place it back in my hand and they're gonna be able to draw another card. That's not gonna be very good at all. We're now gonna move into our sell phase and let's see what there is that we could sell here. We've got, well, our bikes. We've been keeping our bikes because we always want a backup. Oh, I don't need this wrist rocket long shot anymore. We're gonna sell that for two bucks. I think we're gonna sell our automatic pistol for eight bucks. I don't need that anymore. Do I really need this vehicle? Oh, that vehicle's kind of good. I think we're gonna keep, I'm gonna keep this vehicle. I'm gonna sell this vehicle. So let's see what we get. We get a total of 13, what, 13, 14, 15 salvage coins. So we're gonna go gather those. And now we're gonna go ahead and move into our buy purchase phase or whatever. And this is where I'm gonna buy this token. Now I've got 15 from what I've sold. And let's see what else I've got here. I've got another 15. All right, so there's our 30 for Garrison. That completes our town business phase. Now it's time to move into our party exploits phase. So it's not really gonna be much of a surprise. I'm on a mission token, that's my plan. We're gonna perform this mission as our first deed. So this one's gonna cost us three weeks. So we're gonna go ahead and draw our first, our next mission card and see what it is. It says, Road Warriors. Oh, this doesn't sound very good at all. All right, let me read this to you. Major gang activity is rising on this isolated stretch of pre-war highway, overwhelming their play in a blitzkrieg of armored vehicles and motorcycles. They pack massive firepower. No one is safe. Caravans, faction envoys, and even groups of unarmed refugees have gone missing. Those on foot vanish without a trace, while other groups turn up later. Vehicles flipped over in the ditch, riddled with bullet holes, and their carcasses picked clean by vultures. Order must be reestablished. The Council of Ten Towns has tasked you to bring this fight to them. This is strictly a seek and destroy mission, so saddle up and lock and load. To aid you in your road war, the Council presents you with the first vehicle drawn from the spoils deck. Well, this isn't really gonna help us very much, but let's go get our spoils deck vehicle. So unless we get like, I don't know, an army tank, I don't think there's anything we're gonna do. That's not a vehicle, that's not a vehicle, that's not a vehicle, it's vehicle equipment. That's not a vehicle, that's not a vehicle. That's Jason's hockey mask. That's not a vehicle, not a vehicle, not a vehicle. Come on, there's gotta be a vehicle in here somewhere, of course. There's 
I got them all at the beginning. Let's see. Hearts of gold. More not vehicles. There's a vehicle. Oh, I'm sure glad we picked down to this one. All right, so we got ourselves a, what is it, contract truck. This vehicle, if this vehicle is destroyed or discarded, your party retains all stowable equipment. Well, I don't have any stowable equipment, really. So uh, we're not definitely using this. We're keeping our ambulance. So we're going to take our wonderful vehicle and throw it right into the auction house. Now, if we look at the Road Warriors card, our first skill check we have to do is our mechanical skill check, and we need a four. So we're going to go ahead and roll our dice and see how it goes. All right, let's go check it out. So going from left to right, we're going to start with good old Lorenzo. He has a five skill here. He got a three, so that's one success. Our next one is our orange guy. Well, guess what? He failed. Then we've got our green Orson here. He has a six, and he got a three, so that's our second success. Next, we're going to go to our blue guy. Our blue guy has an eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. He got a five, but he does have one auto success for having over 10. So right now we're at three. Our next person is, well, DeForest Kelly here. He has an eight, he got a two, so that means he also succeeded. And then let's look at our van. Our van has a total of three. It got an eight. Uh oh, I don't think we passed. So we add them up. We got one, two, three, four. We only got four. Oh, we only needed four. <laughs> okay, so we did make it. One, two, three, four. We better roll better than that when it comes to our combat attack skill here. All right, so we've made it through our first skill check. Now we have to do our combat skill check. So if we look at our Road Warriors card, we need a seven. Oh, I hope we make this. Come on, we need some good rolls. Oh my goodness, I think those are pretty good. Oh, except for this nine, yuck. So we're gonna start with Lorenzo again. And that nine that I said was a yuck was actually a success because he has nine in his fight skill. Next, we've got our guy that's got a ton of stuff here. And look at this, he rolled a two. He's got nine, 10, 16. So he gets an auto succeed. So I'm gonna put that there. Plus he got a two, so that's two successes. Next, we're going on to Orson here. Orson is the green die. He got a one. He gets to roll another die to see if he can get some more. Know what, I'm not gonna roll it yet. We're gonna hold on. We're gonna see how the rest of our team does. Next, we have Sid. Sid has four, five. And he got a four here. I also have this card, but it hasn't really come into play yet. They also get plus two from that as well. They've got lots of stuff going on here when it comes to combat. Our medic, he got a five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 is the best he can get. He got an eight. That means he did get one success. So we've got one success here, one here, one here, and then we got three over on the other guy, so that's a total of six. Now, we also have our car, check this out. He ran a guy over two, because he needs a three, he got a two. So if we add up all our successes, we've got a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then thanks to our garrison, we've got eight, that's more than enough we need. We were able to take out that fight skill. Oh my goodness, when we started this game, I didn't think we'd ever get that high. I chose not to roll the extra die on my one because I don't want to lose this by rolling a 10, if I can find it, there it is. Now we do have one final skill check. We could choose to do our extra skill check here, our secondary chance skill check, but I don't know, I need a five. You know, let's go for it. I've got some guys that are okay at this skill. I need a five, I need five of these. Oh, I hope I make it, I really do. All right, see how we do. Oh, I see a sub. Oh, I see a Oh my goodness, look at this. Lots of ones. That's fantastic. So again, we'll compare our dice to our guys. We got a one over here. So, so Lorenzo automatically got a skill check. And we can choose to maybe roll again if we want to. Now let's go ahead and check our orange guy. He got an eight. He needed a seven, eight, nine. So he passed his. Now, <laughs> poor Orson. Well, Orson did not make it. He needed a six. So this one failed. Sid is next. Sid, awesome Sid. His mechanical skill is already an auto success. So we're going to go ahead and give him one. He's got eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. And he got a one. So that's two successes he has. And again, he could choose to roll again if he wants to. Now let's also look at D Forrest. He got a one. He also succeeded. A lot of people got ones. Now he only has an eight. So he doesn't get any auto successes, but he did succeed. And our van because we equipped it with the portable generator, it also succeeded. It needed a three, it got a two. So if we look at all our successes, we've got a total of one, two, three, four, five, six. We passed that skill check as well. So not only did we pass the mission skill checks, we also got our secondary skill checks as well. Oh, let's go ahead and see what the success is. 
Success. Gain three prestige, three spoils, and one action card. Oh, that's an awesome reward. Your engine roars, its RPMs and heat gauges in the red. The scenery blurs by as you tear over the broken highway in hot pursuit of the gang called Steel Brigade. You deal death and carnage. Your vehicles jockey and weave, crash and explode, flipping themselves into tatters. Also, our optional skill check says receive the next vehicle drawn from the spoils deck. In the grim aftermath of the battle, you spot a salvageable gang vehicle. So we're gonna go ahead and take advantage of all of this. I'm pretty excited about all the things we got. So we got three prestige, one, two, three. I'm really digging prestige. I really think this is the way we're gonna go for a victory. We're leaving these guys in the dust. Our town health is not as good. We also get three spoils cards. So the first one is, oh, first one's a relic. We get, what is it? It's, <laughs> it's some jackass's goggles. All right, so it gives us some skills and it gives us an armor and it does a weighty thing. So you might as well equip it to somebody. That's pretty awesome. All right, let's see what else we got. We got, oh, we got another relic. What is it? Fred Rogers sweater. Oh, this is awesome. All right, let's see what we get here. It says, equip as the first item. If your party is within one hex of an opponent's town, you may select to steal one of their town technologies. Only one town technology may be possessed while traveling to your town. Upon arrival, equip and upgrade or upgrade this town technology. And it's 16. We might actually sell this because we're not gonna be able to do too much with it, but that's a lot of money. 16 is pretty good. Not to mention, it does help with some skills. Our third one is what is this? Fallen land, a post-apocalyptic board game. <laughs> this is probably the greatest card ever. All right, so we get two prestige. We found the game. It says, a strange pre-war board game about the apocalypse. This is awesome. Okay, kudos to the creators. This is amazing. I am a big fan of this card. All right, so we gained two prestige though. That's awesome, and it is stowable. So we're gonna actually put this in our truck. We'll just drive around in our, our uh, what do you call it, ambulance, and we'll play our game every once in a while. So I do get two prestige from this. That's amazing. We really needed that. Now that we got our spoils card, we also get one action card. Let's see what it is. Town technology. Play during the town business phase. Select and equip a town technology of your choice. Retrieve its chip or upgrade an existing town technology you possess from tier one to tier two. Oh, this is an amazing card. Oh, look how much it costs. This, this is a really good card. And last but not least, because of our optional skill check, we get to receive the next vehicle drawn from the spoils deck. So again, we're just gonna start, oh, we got an American Iron Custom Chopper. Oh, there are a bunch of choppers. All right, I don't think we're gonna use this, but we're gonna go ahead and keep it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take the rest of our cards. Before we do that, I have failed immensely. Well, you can only have a maximum of seven cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have eight cards. So since I was caught with more than seven cards, I have to randomly discard a card. This is gonna be absolutely terrible. You cannot have more than seven at the end of any phase. And we've already gone past the phase where I shouldn't have had more than seven. So we're gonna go ahead and draw this one. I hope it's not one of our really good ones. Let's see which one it is. Okay, that's totally fine. We can lose the Taskmaster's Creed. Now we are gonna take this card into our action deck and since I know I have more than seven, I'm gonna go ahead and discard a card. I'm just gonna discard this one. The Chemical Solution. I don't think I need this card. We're gonna discard it. We also are gonna put our vehicle into the auction house. I'm guessing it's gonna get sold. This, the mo this is my, this is the best card. <laughs> I'm gonna keep saying it, best card ever to a game ever. This is awesome. This gets stowable, I'm gonna put it into our car, but I gain two prestige. So I'm gonna put that with our car and I'm gonna gain two prestige from that. Now, of course we have our goggles here. We're gonna give these to somebody. Let's get all these dice out of here. We don't need these. Let's see who we're gonna give it to. I think we're gonna give it to Sid because Sid would then have five, six attack seven, eight, nine survival, and eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 mechanical. I think that's a good person to give it to. We're gonna give Fred Rogers sweater to Orson Leach. Now this means that he's gonna have a 10 technical skill here. So at some point we're gonna to have to try to rectify that by maybe finding something else that'll go above a 10. I don't like having people with a 10 skill. That's never a really a good thing, I don't believe. Now I do get two prestige for owning the board game of the board game that we're playing. That's a board game. That's absolutely awesome. And now that we completed that mission, we have to find a new place for it. So this is again our tens die, our red one. So we have to find a new place. It's gonna to go to 28. 
which is absolutely awesome because it's right on our way back to our town to go pick up our Iowan. Oh, that might be our next move. With our mission completed, we're going to discard it. We have one week left, and our week is going to be a movement deed. So we're going to go ahead and roll our D6. Oh, we got another six. Wow, we're just amazing at moving. Now, our vehicle gives us three extra movement, but we are subtracting one because now I've put a portable generator on it. So it only gets plus two to the speed, so I only get to move eight. Only eight. Yeah, check this out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're moving completely along the planes right back over to another mission that I bet we're going to try in the next month. Okay, this is awesome. All right, and that's going to end our turn for this month. So with our turn complete, we're going to go ahead and move into turn number five. So we're going to move into our fifth month. And the first thing we're going to do when we move into the fifth month is go to our effects phase. There isn't any, but then we're going to go in the town business phase. And before I draw my action card, this one says play during the town business phase. It doesn't say what part of the town business phase, so I'm going to play it right now. And this one allows me to select and equip a town technology of your choice, retrieve its chip or upgrade an existing town technology you possess from tier one to tier two. And we are going to do this. I am going to tier two, our garrison one, to give us two fight successes, and I'm going to go ahead and discard this card. Now we're going to move into our deal phase, where now I get to draw an action card, and it says medical ingenuity. Huh. Play during the party exploit phase. Any party or character gains two successes toward a single medical skill check. Well, I don't think we're ever going to need this, because we've got DeForest Tanner with us, but we're going to go ahead and take it. And now we're going to move into our resource production. We're going to go ahead and grab our four plus our two. So we get six salvage coin and we get to go up to town health. So our town health now goes to 49. Oh, we're almost at the corner. We're going to start moving that way soon. Now we get to go into the auction house phase where I get to possibly buy three, two of three spoils cards. We got what? Camping gear for 10 bucks. It's stowable. Equipment, you get, I don't think that's coming anywhere near our group. All right, let's see what else we get. Oh, this might be good. Firefighter's Axe. On lockpicking and counter cards, you automatically see it on a mechanical check. All right, yep, that's kind of just like our, where is it? Our, we have another <laughs> sledgehammer, that's what it is. One fight and one survival skill. It's a melee weapon, and it costs six, and it weighs three. That's a possibility. Let's see what our last one is. What is this? The mother load. Oh, that can't be bad. It says, you have discovered a secret room. During setup, reshuffle the mother load and draw a new spoils card, or else immediately draw five spoils card and then discard this card. Oh, my gosh. This is... You know, this is just out of control because I can buy this for five. That just seems a little bit too powerful. But you know what? That's what we're going to do. I'm going to buy it for five, and we're going to go ahead and take advantage of the mother load. Draw five spoils cards. So here is our mother load. Let's see what we got. I'm going to make sure I put these two separate so I don't accidentally mix them up. All right, let's see what we get. By the way, that was one of the things we bought was the mother load. All right, we've got badass socket set. After you successfully complete an encounter or mission card, gain one salvage coin. Oh, no, you know what I forgot? I totally forgot that. I'm going to forget this every time. Where is it? It's that compact welding torch. We completed a fight, a, a successful combat, and I forgot to roll the dice. But you know what? I'm totally okay with that. I'm going to forget that every turn, and that's just fine. Because the <laughs> guys are pretty much souped up as it is. All right, let's see here. We're going to we get this. Let's see what else we get. We get another squad car. What's this? Dork squad. <laughs> Computer repair car. Once per turn, re-roll a failed technical skill check or an encounter. Yeah, no, this is going right in here. I don't care about that. I like my ambulance. We got an assault rifle. We've got lots of these things. This one's cost five, though, so we're going to see. We might equip this. We'll, we'll, we'll take a look. I'm going to put these in the maybe pile. Let's see what else we got. Oh, what is this? A nifty chemistry set. Oh, that's going to help our technical... And our medical skill, all right. And our last spoils card that we got from the mother load is a bunch of duct tape. Unlimited stash of duct tape. Oh, I got to read this. Roll a D6 each end turn phase. On a one or two, retrieve the top card from the spoils discard pile. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? You ignore the break relic and broken action cards. Oh, wow, this thing is absolutely ridiculous. I think I'm probably going to have to keep this, but it's two for each person to have this. 
So I'd have to make sure that everybody can carry this. All right, so we are actually not gonna use this. I know this seems like a really cool card, but for one, I guarantee you, I am gonna forget to do this every time. So I'm actually just gonna put this right over here. Plus it's two for each person, and I've got a lot of stuff I'm applying to give to people. For one, Orison is about to gain this nifty chemistry set. The reason he's gonna gain this nifty chemistry set is because right now he has a 10 in his technical skill, and now he's got a 14. Now he also has a five, six, seven, eight, nine in his medical skill, so that's gonna be really good. Now he only has a weight of five, six, seven, eight, and he can have a total of 11, so he's doing just fine. Next, we've got Lorenzo here. Lorenzo's going to remove his nine millimeter submachine gun. He's gonna pay six bucks, three, six, to buy our hatchet. Well, it's not a hatchet, actually, it's a firefighter's ax. And he's gonna go and take this, but first I'm gonna move the camera so you can see what's going on. All right. He's gonna go ahead and take the firefighter act and this assault rifle, check this out, this is gonna be awesome. All right, he's gonna take both of these and he's also gonna gain this as well. He's got a whole bunch of stuff here. Now he's got eight, nine, 10. So he's doing fine because his is only a 13, but now look what this gives him. It gives him an 11, 12, 13, 14 skill here, a six, five, eight, nine, and a nine. So he's got some really good skills now. And we're gonna go ahead and put this into our auction house, because I think everybody has a ranged weapon of some kind. He's got an act bolt action rifle. He's got his assault rifle. This guy's got that laser pistol, which is awesome, but I'm starting to cover up the words, so I can't really see all this stuff. He's got, I believe he's got one. He's got the flare gun pistol. All right, he's got the worst one, but I still want him to keep it in case I have to save myself. And he's got a 12 gauge bullet shotgun. That sounds like what a doctor needs. And we're gonna return this. This is the other card we could have bought from our auction house and we're only allowed to buy two cards. So this one has to be discarded automatically. Now we have to roll on our town event chart. Remember, I get to subtract three from this roll. This is just ridiculous. I got a seven. Oh, minus three is actually only four. So it's no effect. Well, that's okay. We can't always win. Now, of course, we have to roll on our OFTEC chart and see what happens. All right, come on, so hopefully nothing too bad. Oh my gosh, I got a 10, I guarantee you that's no good. And we got a five, so let's go see what happens. All right, let's do the easy one first. He got a five, which means that I'm gonna lose, he's gonna gain four town health and two prestige and a secondary effect draw and play one card from the red dot action deck. Now, last time we had a choice between which one we should take, we took the lesser one. So this time we're gonna take the harder one, which is gonna be the 10. So we're gonna go ahead and deal with this first, which means the sons of Neptune are gonna gain two prestige and they're also gonna gain four town health. One, two, three, four, oh, they're one behind us. Now we have to deal with the new Federalists. Oh, this is just gonna be terrible. All right, they got a 10. So they get eight town health, which means they're gonna leapfrog us big time. And five prestige almost catches them up. And we're also gonna have to roll a D6 after we take care of this. So gaining five prestige, one, two, three, four, five. They're really close to us. They're only four behind us right now. We also have to deal with eight town health. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They've gone right past us over onto 51. And now I have to roll a D6 and let's see what happens. Oh, I got a six. All right, let's check that out. It says on a, look at the, oh, this is gonna be ridiculous. On a fourth or six PVP, see page nine to create an opponent. All right, we're gonna go ahead and take care of that now. So there's two different ways to handle this situation. One is option one. We draw bounty hunter or assassin NPCM, which states here, draw the first NPCM bounty hunter, assassin, or hitman card. Discarding all others. Reshuffle if necessary. That character enters play at the party's location and utilizes their first strike, and then I enter PvP against that character. That sounds pretty cool, but option two actually sounds really cool. Let me show you what this entails. Option two, you're gonna create a PvP party. So you're actually gonna take that player mat that, you, that rolled the 10, and you're gonna go ahead grab five characters, attach spoil cards, you're gonna gain, uh, and then you're gonna go ahead and fight this group just as if you were to meet another player on the mat. I think that is really intriguing. But for the sake of a online playthrough here, I'm actually just gonna go with option one. If you have this experience within the game, I strongly recommend with going option two. It is more difficult, 
but I think it would be a much more enjoyable experience. We're going to go with option one. I'm not going to say this isn't enjoyable. I'll bet this will be equally enjoyable as I watch my team fall to a bounty hunter. But I'm, I just want you to know there are two different options. So it's your choice what you want to do. They say that option one is easier than option two, but option two does seem like a fun way to do things. So with that said, let's go ahead and draw our cards until we find a bounty hunter, assassin, or hitman. So this is going to be what we're going to do. We're going to start drawing from our red dot action deck. This was on top because we drew it from that last turn. I'm just going to discard it. We're going to go through our cards. All right, that is not one. Oh, here's one. Okay, this is an NPCM. We've got the Red Reavers. They're a high-tech mobile. Oh, they're only raiders, though. I need to find a bounty hunter, an assassin, or a hitman. All right, so let's keep going. Nope. Nope. <laughs> this could take a while. We're just going to keep on drawing until we find one. Oh, hopefully it's not too far down. All right, I'm just throwing these cards aside because we just need to find this guy. All right, let's see what we find. Nope, nothing. Here we go. Keep going. These are all pretty awesome cards, but I don't want to... Okay, here we found one. NPCM, let's see. It says Ronin's Renegades Veteran Bounty Hunters. Okay, here they come. Here are some veteran bounty hunters. Now, they're going to go ahead and be able to do their first strike ability. Let's see here. Move to and attack a party in PvP combat. Their first strike causes 3d6 damage. Oh, that's going to be terrible. All right, so we're going to go do the 3d6 damage, and then I'm going to explain what all of this stuff is down here. This right here, that symbol, the lightning bolt, that's their first strike ability. All right, so we're going to go ahead and fight Ronin's Renegades. And we have to take 3d6 first strike damage. Let's see how much damage we take. We take... Three, seven. All right, so I have to take seven first strike damage. I think everybody's going to just take one, except for Lorenzo, because he's got a lot of health. And also, you know, this guy's got, uh, <laughs> he's a veteran park ranger. He can take a couple damage too. But everybody else is going to take one. I think that's going to be the best bet here. So we're going to go ahead and distribute our first strike damage. Now, some of our characters do have armor, but that's not going to help when it comes to first strike damage. It ignores armor. So now let's go ahead and take a look at our Ronin's Renegades. If we notice down here, they've got 35 health. So we're going to have to do 35 points of damage to these guys. That means they have their first strike. We already did it. This is their speed. If we choose the flee, we have to go against that speed. I don't plan on fleeing. I plan to take these guys out. This symbol right here, this Omega symbol, that means that they have 13 to any skill they do. So every skill they have has a 13. So when they go to make their skill rolls, it says here, Ronin's Renegades roll 6d10 for skill checks. So they're going to roll their skill checks, but they're automatically going to start with six successes because they're above a 10 on all their successes. So we're going to go ahead and roll up Ronin's skill checks. Now, I do want you to know that if they get a 10 on any of the dice, I'm going to lower this number because not only would that dice fail, the auto success would also fail. So let's see how they do. Sadly, they did not get any 10s. <laughs> but it looks like they got a couple more successes. So they needed a three or lower in order to get some extra successes. These don't count. So they have a total of eight successes that we have to deal with. So I'm gonna go and put these next to our group and we know we have to beat an eight. So now we're gonna go ahead and roll up our group and see how we do on our combat checks. So we're gonna go ahead and roll them up. All right, this roll doesn't look too good, but we're gonna go match it up with our stuff. All right, so we have to beat Nate. We're gonna start with our red guy. Our red guy got a nine. Now he had an 11, so he had an auto success already, but this nine is gonna be a miss. So he does have one success. Our orange guy got a four, and he has a nine, 10, 16. So he had one auto success as well, plus he got another one, so that's two. So we're at three right now, that's not too bad. We only need a few more. Our green guy, on the other hand, he is a massive fail. He didn't get anything. He needed a nine though, so he didn't lose any of his auto successes. Let's go check the other two. Sid Crawford here, he got a nine. He also failed. Wow, this is just terrible. Four, five, six. I needed a six, he got a nine. All right, let's see how D Forrest did. He had a four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So he had an auto success as well, but this nine doesn't give him any extra. And of course, our car up here, it only had a three, so it didn't help. Now we do get plus two from our garrison successes, successes here. And we have an ability on our card here. And that's that we gain plus one during fight rolls. And this is definitely a fight roll. So we do get plus one, which sadly doesn't really help any of our guys. So let's count up our successes. We've got one, two, three. He didn't get any successes. He's terrible, terrible. Four, five, six. Oh no, and we needed eight. Oh, that's terrible. 
All right, so we only got six successes, and they got eight. So that means for every success that they beat us by, we have to take D6 damage. Oh, I forgot one. Our red guy actually made a success as well. So they only beat us by one. That's not too bad. So that means we're just going to go ahead and pick up one of these D6s, and we're going to go ahead and roll it and see how much damage they do to us. Oh, they do four. So again, we're just going to give everybody one damage, two, three, and then we're going to take Lorenzo, who's off camera, I know. We're going to turn his into a three, so he's at three damage. Now, I also had a first strike weapon. I just wanted you to be aware of this, that I could have rolled, but I wasn't exactly sure how to do it. I'm supposed to do my skill check, but they've got like a million skill checks, so I wasn't exactly sure how that all worked. So I decided just to fire it like I normally would. So it's not that big a deal. We got a six for them. Auto six is what they get. And now we get to roll their dice. Oh, and they only got one more success. And look, they got two tens. Oh, this is going to be awesome. All right, they got two tens, which means I'm going to lower this to a four because that means two of their auto successes failed. But they did manage to get another one, so it's going to go back to five. So they actually only have five successes. So let's see how we do against these guys. Come on, this is the time to really shine, guys. Oh, I see some shine. Oh, I don't see some shining. Look at that guy. <laughs> wow, our guy's a singer, not a fighter, I guess. All right, so let's see how we do. Before we do that, I want to take a damage off of him, and I'm also going to take a damage off of DeForest because both of those characters had armor, and I totally forgot about this. Well, I guess I that's my own fault. I need to bring that into play so I can remember it. I'm going to put it right there. I should have gotten plus two to all my combat rolls. So we're going to start with our red guy. He got one success, and I can roll that again to maybe get another one. Now, he also has an auto success as well. So he's up to two successes, and I could roll for a third if I wanted to. It's my call. Next, we're going to go on to our orange guy. He got an eight, which he didn't get an extra success, but he still has that main success because he has plus two, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Oh, he did get it. Eighteen. So he got two successes. That's fantastic. Eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Wow, actually, he's got a twenty. So he has two auto successes. Now, they look at this. So the eight does actually miss, but he got two auto successes. Next, we've got our green guy. Our green guy got a five. Well, that's too bad. He got nine, ten, eleven. So he did get one auto success. So we're going to take our auto success die, put it up here, but the five doesn't help us. So we're going to move to our blue guy. I'm not even going to care. Blue guy missed. Thank you, blue guy. Now, he got a four. Let's see how we do. I apologize if I miss anything doing all these skill checks and figuring out who has who, but there's a lot I'm trying to remember in all this. I mean, I totally forgot this card last time. I can't believe I did that. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. He has a 16, so he has an auto success plus this is a success. Fantastic. Our van failed miserably. It got a seven. But we do have our garrison, which gives us two more. So let's figure out our successes. We have one, two. This is a success. This is a two successes. No, this is not a success. I apologize. But this is a success. But our five from our green guy is not a success. We have two more successes here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine successes to their five success, which means we've beat them by four. I'm going to roll one more red die and see if we can do it again. He's got a 9, 10, 11. No, I'm not going to roll it because he actually needs to roll like a 1 in order to actually get another success. So we're not going to do that. But we did beat these guys by quite a bit. So since we beat them by 4, we're going to roll 4d6 to see how much damage we do to them. All right, take this, mercenaries. Oh, my gosh, that's amazing. We got 18, 19 damage. Oh, my goodness. I should be making a Dungeon & Dragons character. All right. So we're going to do 19 damage. And we're just going to use Salvage Coin to represent their health because it's so high, it's 35. So I've done 19. Wow, i got to do a lot more. All right, but that's a really good roll. So let's see what else we're going to do. We are going to add another 2 damage. And why am I going to do that, you ask? Well, I've got that laser pistol that I totally forgot about the first time. It says here, after, oh, if it doesn't glare, after each round of PvP, choose an opposing character and that assign them one point of radiation damage. Well, I'm going to assign it to these guys. So that's our second round of PvP. So they're going to take a total of two from that. And now we're going to go ahead and see how we do again. Now, again, they start with six auto successes and we're going to have to roll some dice. All right, come on. Let's see a bad roll. That's a bad roll. Oh my gosh, not a single extra success. And they got a 10, which means this is going to go back down to a five. Oh, this is going to be awesome. Well, I'm going I'm to say that, and then I'm going to roll terribly. All right, so we're going to roll for ourselves now. Let's see how we do. Okay, I don't think we did too bad, but this 10 isn't going to help anything at all. 
All right, starting with our first three guys, we got a five. Let's go again and see what he's got. 11 plus 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, plus I got Wiley, I forgot about that last time, 17. So he got two successes. So we're gonna go ahead and put a two on that guy and I'm just gonna remove the die so we know how many he has. Next, we're gonna go on to our orange guy. He got a three and he's got a nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. He's got a 20, so this misses, but he does have two auto successes. So we're gonna give him two successes there, okay. Next, we're gonna move on to our green, our green guy is the one who failed. Wow, Orson, you're just terrible at shooting. Why did I give you the laser pistol? You can't hit anything. All right, now we're gonna move over to these guys. Let's see how they did. He got a seven. So he's got four, five, six, seven, eight from these things. And he's got plus one from our Wiley. So he got a nine, so that's a success. We're gonna put a die there. All right, that one's good. Next, we've got our doctor here. He got a four. Let's see how he done. He had four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So he also got two successes. I'm gonna remove the die. And now let's add up our successes to see how we did. Whoops, so we got a total of two, four, six, seven, and then don't forget our garrison card, eight, nine successes again. And they only got a four. We beat him again by four. I'm gonna roll these four dice and hopefully we finish him off. All right, so we get to roll four dice. All right, let's see if we can finish them off. We got 10, 9, 9, 10, 11. I think that's what it is, right? 9, no, it's 10, 17. <laughs> I can count. I get 17. All right, and they have 10, so let's get 17. All right, so they're at 10. I think we got them. I'm, I'm really good at math, so I had to make sure I went and got the tokens. 10, 20, 30. Here's their 33, 36, 37, we did defeat them. All right, so we got rid of these bounty hunters. Oh my goodness, that was awesome. I'm a big fan. I like the way combat works. That was really fun, especially when it's not an Amish rake fight that I have to deal with. Fighting renegades, I'm okay. Amish rake fight, not so good. So we did beat the Ronin re renegades. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and discard our Ronin's renegades. And now that we're finally done with our town effects phase, we're gonna move into the financial period, which means we're gonna sell our things that we don't want Let's see what we got. We got 12 plus 17 plus, oh my gosh, look at all this stuff we can sell. And absolutely amount, we're gonna keep that. That's the only thing. So we're gonna get what? 18, 20, 30, 40, 50, 64 bucks. I don't see why not. 64 bucks, sell it all. So we managed to gain ourselves 64 salvage coin. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and spend 60 to gain these two technologies. I don't see why not. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Look at all these technologies now. Oh my gosh, my town is just prospering. So I'm gonna gain two more prestige and 10 more town health. So we're gonna go ahead and discard 60. That brings our prestige to 18. We only need two more to win. And I get 10 more town health. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, I eat my dust. We're at 59. With that complete, we're gonna move into our party exploit phase and we're again gonna attempt a mission. This is awesome. We got really super lucky that it ended up right there. So let's go ahead and draw our next mission card. It says, National Guard Remnants. All right, I'm gonna read this to you. If you fail this mission, it remains face up and becomes available for other parties to attempt after placing a mission special chip at this location. Several weeks ago, Rumors began circulating about the appearance of a well-equipped, company-sized detachment of rogue National Guard remnants. This morning, an emergency message from your factions confirms it. Led by the tyrannical Captain Holden, his force has overthrown a peaceful farming community, an ally and trade partner. Declaring this town a military dictatorship, he has since publicly executed their elected mayor his family, and other public officials. Holden has threatened a similar fate to others unwilling to bow a knee. Terminate this madman and his forces with extreme prejudice to free the survivors. All right, so let's take a look at this. We gained two salvage coin, which I forgot to gain from the last one, if there was any. We also gain, have to do a four survival, a seven combat, and then we have an optional skill check of four medical. I'm gonna go for all these. I think we could really do this. 
I checked our last mission. There wasn't any salvage coin, but this one has two. So I'm gonna go ahead and take two salvage coin and we're gonna move that into our salvage coin area. Now we have to attempt a four survival skill check. So we're gonna roll our dice and see how we do. I don't like that 10. So of course our 10 was our first guy, he didn't make it, but now look at our orange guy. He got a two and he's got a nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So that's two successes. Now we're gonna go ahead and move on to our green guy. He got a two, that's enough. He gains one success. So I'm gonna put a one success there. And I'm just gonna remove the dice. Now we're gonna check our leather guys. Sid, he only has a five, six, seven, eight, well only nine, I guess that's fantastic. He got a <laughs> skill check, he makes it. All right, he got one. Now next we got DeForest, he's got what? Six, seven, eight, that's enough. He gains a, he passed his skill check, he gets one, and then I believe we have one up here. No, we don't, I'm surprised we don't have a survival. Oh yeah, here it is. We got plus one success for our survival action. So if we bring these all in, we got one, two, three, four, five, six. That's plenty to be able to pass our survival check. Now we have to pass a seven combat check. Let's see how we do on that one. All right, let's go match. Oh my goodness, look at all these tens. This is gonna be terrible. All right, our first guy got a 10, so he got nothing. Our next guy got a 10, he got nothing. What do you know, this guy with a six, he actually made it, because he has what, four, nine, 10, 11. So he's got one automatically, but this, I guess the six doesn't matter. All right, then we've got oh, our, this guy, Sid again, can't fight. He, <laughs> glad I didn't give him any good weapons. He hasn't rolled anything but a 10. Next, we've got our doctor. He got a one, so he's gonna be able to roll other things. And then we've got our van which I forgot about in our last skill check anyway. He got a five, which is enough because he's got three, plus we've got those suits. I can't forget those suits this time. So I get plus two for that, plus we get two for this. All right, so maybe we might not be too bad. We got one, no, we didn't get that one. We got one, two, three, four, five, and he can choose to roll again. And I do choose to roll again. So let's see how we do. We got a four. So that's their success. So we got two, three, four, five, six. I believe that's a success. Four, five, six, nine, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We get plus one, 15, 16, 17. Yes, that's a success. So we got one, two, three, four, five. Ah, oh, it's not too bad. Two, three, four, five, six. We missed it by one. But I can play this during the party exploit phase. A character of your choice gains one success to a skill check. You know, I'm just gonna choose to be, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna choose this guy to gain one success. So now that brings it to seven. And if that's not exactly how that card works, well, don't forget I got my act of God. So if all else fails, we're going to be able to play this and say that I succeed no matter, no matter what this rolls are anyway. But here we go. We got the, I think we have seven successes here. If I did it wrong, let me know. The last check we have is our optional check, which is gonna be our medical check. So I'm gonna roll these up. And I know this is a success. These are all successes, that's a success. I get an auto success from my, <laughs> look at all these, this is, I wish this was my combat roll. I get an auto success from my doctor, so I don't even need to go compare them. These all, I, I passed my optional skill check. So we're gonna go ahead and read the success. It says success. Gain three prestige, three spoil cards, an action card, and if applicable, receive any salvage coin chips that are on this card. It must mean if we failed, we're gonna put salvage coins on there. You assassinate Holden and eliminate his remaining forces. Also, as an optional skill check, we are able to receive three town health. A thorough search of the hospital yields several metal shipping containers. Inside are stolen medical supplies from recent caravan raid. So we're gonna go ahead and gain three Now, technically, in order to win, I have to get to the end of the phase, but that cost us three weeks. I could do one more move action to actually get back to my town if I want to, and we can all celebrate together in the town. But we've gotten to the end of the game. We've managed to get to 20 prestige before the New Federalists or the Sons of Neptune did as well. This game is absolutely amazing on all different levels. Not only do you have missions you can do, and you can also do encounters. There's combat that is just absolutely fantastic. There is the idea of keeping your own, creating your own little civilization here, and all the different cards that can make this game turn and twist without, without a second thought. Like this card is just ridiculous, this Act of God card. And let's not forget the greatest card ever put in a board game yet. This one, 
right here. This wins for best board game card of all time. That is awesome that they that you guys actually got to see Fallen Land, the board game, in an actual board game. Oh, that's absolutely amazing. I love it. I am so glad that Fallen Dominion was able to do that. That really is classy. I love it. We had a pretty good group. We got some really good equipment. And at first, I didn't think we were going to have a lot in it, but we kept getting some really good stuff. Now, I do think it's kind of ridiculous that for five bucks, I can buy one of these mother load loot catches and gain, what, five spoil cards? I mean, that's just ridiculous. That's a lot of stuff. And I actually was able to sell most of it just to get some of these technologies up here, which really helped me get through the game. Now, don't forget, this game will be coming to Kickstarter, so don't forget to hit that I up in the upper corner here. If you're interested in backing this game when the Kickstarter happens, I'm going to make that active. Now, this game was really, really good, and not only can you play it solo, you can play it with a lot of other people, two to five players, plus the extra expansion gives it up to six players. So there's a lot of stuff that you can do with this game. And the replay of this big game is just amazing. This is the amount of characters that I haven't seen yet. And we've played with the characters here, and we had some there. Not to mention our action deck that we haven't seen is still this big. And this is the red dot action deck. It's absolutely enormous. And how many encounters do we do? Four, five? Look how many are just on the planes alone. There is so much material in this game that you could play this game over and over and over and always have a new and exciting experience. Fallen Dominion has created an absolutely amazing post-apocalyptic board game that I don't think rivals any other post-apocalyptic board game or even a board game of this scale that involves missions and building of towns and having each little character and their setup on this is so good. Just I love the way you build your characters and their characters just the stuff just slides right underneath. It's all there. Now of course it is sometimes tough you have to with these little symbols you got to pull them out and look but you just reorganize it again. It's not the end of the world. If you did enjoy the playthrough, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up, hit the like symbol, the bell symbol, all those fun things. And also, don't forget to leave anything in the comments below. Are you excited for this game to come back? Do you have this game? And how many times have you actually played this game? I could see this game being played hundreds of times and having a new and unique experience every time. So please go ahead and write anything you want in the comments. I'd love to hear from everyone. Again, thank you so much for watching. And if you're interested to see what comes next, then I need you to meet me at the table.